Is this working? Yes. So, hello everyone. Thanks for coming. And I'm Spiros. I'm in the Nara CERN. And I will talk about the system containers on the atomic hosts. Sense atomic, other atomic, and real atomic. Um, I work for the cloud team at CERN, and I'm the project, the project team lead of Open Stack Management, the container infrastructure management for the service at CERN. Can you hear me now? Okay, I will do it like this. So, what is CentOS Atomic? CentOS Atomic is uh, almost like a normal CentOS, only that it's uh, an existing collection of RPMs packed in an OS3 to have an uh, undeployed mutual infrastructure. So the idea is that uh, the CentOS team the cent and the Atomic team they release, uh, uh, they release uh, CentOS and they usually QK images or background images with some pre existing, uh, with, with a small collection of RPMs inside. And, um, and you can build a container infrastructure on top. Uh, it's like an op optimal uh, operating system with uh, tools to manage and spawn and create containers. I will talk about uh, the atomic utility, which is heavily used in the atomic host. Scopio, which is a tool to manipulate um, uh, container images, copy them, pull them, and push them. Rancy, which is a low level tool um, to spawn uh, containers. And uh, Docker, of course, that most of you know. Um, as I said, in CentOS, it's not possible to, in CentOS Atomic, it's not possible to add in your RPMs, but you can. The, the habit is that um, it's an atomic operation, so it creates a new commit in the tree and you must reboot. So if I install git vim bash, I must uh, reboot or by the changes and I install with RPM OS3. And actually, to show what this means, so this is a CentOS atomic code, and there is my yum, and there is 460 packages, and that's it. So in, in this, actually there are more because of this one, I have added the images, etc. But um, you can add packages um, as I did. So if you want to add um, which package, it's dpd. So uh, Atomic will check out a new tree. It will download metadata, and then it will install um, the new package and create an OS3 commit. At the end of, uh, of this procedure, it will ask me to reboot to, to, to check out to the other, to, 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 the, to the new tree. And containers. So before going to system containers, I will talk about the OCI containers. And I have also given this presentation about only about OCI containers. But um, the system containers that are part of uh, the atomic project are basically uh, OCI containers. So OCI containers are um, containers compliant to specific uh, to specification about images and runtimes. So I put in the link for for the runtime spec. It's not very long. But I mean, someone that is interested, you can read it and uh, get the basic idea. But in one sense, I would say that it defines what the container should look like. It's a bundle, which and it's a directory that has a config JSON, which is a big ugly JSON file that describes everything about names, faces, Linux capabilities, and mounts, what kind of mounts, and other kind of flags like uh, communicating with system D or mount propagation, etc. And then there are different OCI compliant runtimes like run C, Rocket, container D, and then Docker uses container team. And in, in this case, uh, for CentOS and Fedora Atomic, uh, RANC is used. And Docker in that case uses RANC. So, Atomic System Containers. Um, the Atomic team created this Atomic Utility. Uh, it's, a, it's a Python program that uses uh, under, under the hood RANC, Docker, OS3, and Scopel. 
that manipulates containers similarly to Docker. So you can install them, pull them, update them, roll back, uninstall them, delete them, etc. In um, all these containers, the, then, in a different way than Docker, they are managed by systemd. So with, atom with the atomic utility, you install, uh, you, you pull the image and you install it in, a, in OS3, and then you also have some systemd template units, which atomic puts them uh, in the right directory and enables them, and then you can start uh, the containers with systemd and manage them like any other service. This kind of containers, uh, if you have an application that wants to, that it's very close to the host, it's a very good idea to use a system container. On the other hand, if you have a simple HTTP server or a web application that it's stateless and you don't care about where it, where it runs, it's better to use another environment like an orchestration system where uh, the container boots anywhere and uh, it can be killed and spawn in at any time. But in other cases, uh, where the application is much, much more closer tied to the host, for example, if you want to run Docker itself, you can run it in a container. You can just uh, have it uh, moving hosts around. So you want you want to close an integration um, to the host. So how do you build a system container? So as I said, the container is. Um, is a directory which is the root file system of the um, container and the configuration. To create this, uh, this image and this, um, uh, this bundle, you need a Docker file, which is a standard Docker file that you describe which packages you want to install. And then you have some extra things like some labels that you say that you give hints to the atomic tree to do what you do. And you also have um, these template files that I talked about. Uh, which we will go through them and we'll follow this link after. Um, so you also have this manifest files, which is defaults for the application, the TMP files, which are files that maybe the container uh, assumes that they exist on the host, and the systemd template that you want to start your container. And then all of these are copied to the Docker image, and when Atomic installs the containers, it copies everything and sets up the host. So, to have a look what this looks like. So, the files that we talked about are the configuration, service template, manifest, and tape files. Let's have a look to the Docker file actually. So, here is a standard Docker file. The only difference is that we have here the labels. Um, you have the name, version, and you can see that it's an atomic type system. So this tells the atomic command, install this as a system container. <clears throat> you can have a more like this, and about exporting files to the host, a good example is EDCT, where in this case, um, here, um, we copy files to exports here. So we copy all these templates to exports, and then the atomic utility knows where to look and do all the setup uh, for the host. So let's go and build one. So I clone the repo. And this is the Hello World container. It has the same files um, as I mentioned. This is from another experiment. So if I build, it's pre-built and I have already pushed it. So if I want to install it now, so I do atomic install minus minus system just to be sure to enforce that it's a system container. I give it a name, then this name will go to them templates and it will be installed as a systemd unit, and then I pass uh, just uh, the container, the, the registry that I want to install. So, uh, since the image exists already in the host, it, uh, it exists in the OS3, we didn't see the message about pulling, but uh, it extracted the, the container in um, parallel containers, hello world, 
and it loads systemd. So now if I start start it as a standard service and I can see that it's running and I can curl Runs like a standard service, so it's managed by system D. Let's stop it. So, this is a great way to extend the atomic host. Since, as we saw, it has a limited number of packages and you can install whatever you want, uh, it's a great way to be able to extend it. I will show you later how we use it to actually deploy uh, Docker and Kubernetes and the other components uh, that are go with Kubernetes. Show you so about how we use it. Uh, we use it in OpenStack Magnum, which is a container orchestration, the container infrastructure management service of OpenStack. Um, and <coughs> we'll go through this very quickly. Uh, if you don't know what OpenStack is, it's a cloud infrastructure project that has uh, roles and uh, projects. So you can use uh, a, pro a project in uh, OpenStack and have your own cluster. Uh, <coughs> where it's deployed Docker Swarm or Kubernetes or Mesos or TCS. And um, this, this videos, but it describes uh, what, what the class is made about. But the key point is that this is the architecture. So um, on the left side, uh, this is a typical, let's say, the VM in the cluster that it's deployed uh, with the orchestration service. And so as you can see here, it says, Kubernetes or Mesh or TCS. So what we try to do is to use the atomic hosts to use the same exactly base image that is shipped from uh, Fedora and Santos project and install in system containers the orchestration that we need. How this works? When a user access a cloud that has Magnum enabled, he, he can do some he can list some cluster templates and then with a single command you can create a Swarm cluster or a Kubernetes cluster and then talk to the cluster. So I have already created one. So I will just log in to in a, in a Fedora Atomic host this time and see how the containers uh, look like inside. So here I have a Swarm cluster and a Kubernetes cluster. So first I will log into the Kubernetes cluster. So, this is the master node of Kubernetes. So, as we, we can see here, we have the Kubernetes component. This is Kubelet. Maybe you don't see it at the bottom. It'll go up. So, we have Kubelet, Kubeprox, Kubeprox, Server, Controller Manager, Scheduler, and it is one custom uh, container that we have to do some configuration. And here you can see that the backend is OS3. If it was a Docker container, it would say Docker, so this is a system container, and the runtime is around C, which is the standard runtime uh, in the atomic code. Um, if I log out and then log into Swarm, So in this case, we run Docker itself in a container. So if we do 
Cloud Care version. We'll see that Docker is 130, which is what ships with Atomic. But uh, if we do Docker info, we will see that it runs Docker 1709 Community Edition. This is not the package that is shipped with the CentOS or Fedora Atomic. So if you manage your own containers, you can install basically whichever version that you want. We should uh, build the uh, 1712 as I can see, but uh, this is how we can just uh, escape to what uh, this provides. And here are the links that I um, talked about. Let um, me just see here. Um, this is the Atomic System Players repo that is maintained by the Atomic uh, team that manages Fedora and CentOS. And there are a lot of contributors like us from uh, OpenStack Magnum and other users. And this is the link to the project. So this is also where you can find me if you have questions. OpenStack containers for OpenStack, Atomic for Atomic hosts, send us the third day. So that's it. Thank you.